Welcome back to another episode of Annie Makes Art School. I'm really excited for today's session because we're going to be tackling one of my absolute favorite things, which is blending skin tones using oil paints. As with everything I share in these sessions, please know there are a lot of different ways of approaching this. I'm just sharing one technique that I find helpful, but it's certainly not a requirement that this is the one right way to blend skin tones. For today's demo, I'll be doing a lighter skin tone and a darker skin tone, and we'll talk my way through the process with a time lapse sped up by about four times. So we should be able to get through both of these processes in about 15 minutes. If you'd prefer to see a slower version of the time lapse without the narration, I'll also be uploading just a two times sped up video with music in the background. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And also, if you have tips or tricks that you like to use when you're blending skin tones, please let me know as well. I'm always excited to hear other perspectives and opinions and to try new things. Let's get started. To begin with, I've sketched out two similar figures on pieces of canvas board. I usually prefer working on stretched canvas, but these are just for a little demo, so I figured I'd keep it cheap and easy. Throughout this demo, I'm going to switch back and forth between both figures, but I'm starting off with my paler one. And what I'm going to do first is take my blue and fill in all of the areas that are shadows. I'll sometimes use this same process when doing a darker skin tone, but for the sake of this demo, I wanted to show two different ways of approaching it. So I'm just taking that solid blue, I've mixed it with some linseed oil to thin it out, and I'm filling in anywhere that I see a darker portion of the figure in my reference image. You may remember from my episode on color theory that I discussed two different ways of approaching primary colors, CMYK and RYB. In the case of figures, I generally prefer to work RYB for the exact reason that a lot of people don't particularly like that primary set. When these colors are blended together, they tend to create more muted, mellow tones as opposed to the more vibrant tones that you often get from CMYK. Now that I've got my shadows filled in, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to switch over to yellow, and instead of pulling out where my shadows are, I'm going to show where my highlights are. Next, I'm going to grab red and fill in my middle tones. This is an important step because not only is it filling in the areas that were left blank, but I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to blend some of the transitions between colors. For this next step, I'm going to mix a soft mixing white with some linseed oil. I strongly recommend you use a soft mixing white for this step and not a titanium or a zinc, but once I have a nice mixture all pulled together and thinned out, I'm going to apply that over the entirety of the skin area. This is going to help neutralize it out, lighten the overall tone, and blend my colors together. We still have a ways to go on that piece, but now let's catch up a little bit with our second piece. In this case, I'm going to start out by mixing an overall base neutral tone. So I'm going to put together a little bit of red, blue, and yellow, and a little bit of titanium white, and then blend them with oil until I get a nice pretty brown. I'm going to apply that base color over the entire surface where the skin is going to be, not worrying about lights or darks or anything, just a large block of color. 
I do sometimes approach painting darker skin tones with the exact same order of steps as I showed in the first demonstration, but it can become a little bit more complicated and challenging since a white pigment is used to do the blending and has a tendency to strip some of the color out of the skin tone. In this case, I'm giving myself a nice creamy darker base to work on top of, so as I go back in later and add in those primary colors, they won't be bleached out too much. Depending on the skin tone of my subject, sometimes this base layer is more caramely like this, other times it's more of a darker raw umber. So now I'm going in on top of that brown layer and I'm doing the same process from the earlier piece, starting out with my blue as shadows, then I'm gonna work my way through yellow for highlights and red for midtones, blending all of them together into that base layer. Let's hop back over to our first piece, and in this case, after letting it sit for a while, it's still looking a little too Lisa Frank to me, so I'm gonna do a bonus layer of that soft mixing white, just to neutralize out that skin tone a little bit more thoroughly. At this point, this piece is starting to look pretty washed out, so I'm gonna come back in and put some really dark shadows. I'm using a raw umber, although sometimes for this step, I'll just blend together a really dark purple using the same red and blue I used for my primaries. Now I'm going to do that same step on my other piece using either a raw umber or a mixed purple, going in and filling in just the darkest portions of the shadows. Now we're gonna do one of my favorite steps in the process, which is adding some unexpected pops of color. In this case, I've decided to go with kind of a bubblegum pink for my paler skin tone, and on my darker skin tone, I'm gonna use a really lovely light lavender. 
there's really no right or wrong answer in terms of adding in these pops of color. It helps to look at your reference picture and see if you're missing an overall kind of color quality from that reference, or you can just kind of play and experiment. Sometimes I'll use a bright minty green. A lot of times that purple is one of my favorite ones to incorporate. The more you do it, the more you'll get a sense of what's going to look fun and good and what's going to look a little wacky. As you can probably see, the purple I added sticks out a lot more on the skin tone than the pink I added to the other one, so I'm now going to take a brush and just very lightly blend that purple in with the rest of the tone. Doing that made me realize that the overall tone of this skin was coming out a little bit too yellow, so I mix a little bit more purple with a good amount of oil and go over top the entire thing with that nice neutralizing lavender. With my skin tones mostly done, at this point I'm going to start adding in details, like the undergarments and the background. Because I've gone with a bright red for both, instead of adding in black for the shadows, I'm going to use the contrasting color of green to add in those dark tones. You'll see as I add this that the end result is still going to be almost black on the page, but it's going to have a little bit warmer, more natural tone to it, as opposed to if I used a really bold inky black.
Next I'm going to put in the backgrounds and in this case I decided to use the same pop of color that I added as my skin tone highlight as the background. So I'm using that bright bubble gummy pink behind my paler figure and I'm going to use the same light lavender behind my darker figure. Again, that's definitely not the only way you can choose the colors in your piece, but it is a nice way to kind of tie things together and give them a sense of continuity. Once I've got these backgrounds fully filled in, I'm going to call it a day on these two particular studies. If I was going more in depth or working on a larger piece, I would probably spend a little bit more time drawing out the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights, and would probably do a round of glazes, drawing out some of the colors that are more subtle within the skin tone. But I think this was a good intro today for the process that I use in blending skin tones. If you guys have questions or comments, please let me know. This is honestly one of my favorite processes within art, and I would love to discuss it further.